Yes! It's working! It's working, it's working. Sorry. Sorry about that. I just had to restart it to get the camera to work. But hopefully you can see in the corner down there. No, you can actually see my original console right here. Muted, muted, muted. Muted, muted, am I muted? Hello, hello, hello. It's not showing as muted. How's that? Is that fixed? Is that better? tweak any more settings, everything just seems to be going wrong. You can see the game, you can hear me, I presume. So let's just try it as, as it is now. Every single time I go live, something goes wrong and I don't change any of the settings, so I have no idea why. It's so frustrating. I just hate the fact that you can't rely on any of the settings in OBS to work. Anyway, how's it sounding and looking now? Can you all see it okay? Can you all hear me okay? Is the game okay? I don't really think there's anything I can do to change the audio now because everything seems to be coming out the same channel for no reason in particular because last time I streamed everything was separated. So we'll just have to deal with it. Anyway, as I was saying before I was cut off by trying to get this set up to work, everything's good. That's good. Thank God. Man, I hate the technical setup behind these streams. Oh my God, it's driving me crazy. Um, hello! Yes, hello. Sorry about that. Thank you for sticking with me while I sorted all that out. Anyway, as I was saying, um, this is actually my original nest from my childhood. And my parents came around to my house the other day and dropped off a few suitcases full of stuff. And in there was the box for the nest and a load of games that I thought I'd lost forever. And they were all in there. So I finally got really excited about it and I've plugged everything in I'm going to do a video this Friday about my, you know, growing up with the NES and the sort of experiences that I had with it and the different games that I played and yeah, Mega Man was one of those games that I played a lot as a kid this one is Mega Man 4 which is my personal favourite because it's the one I grew up with even though I know a lot of people don't really like this one as much as some of the earlier entries in the series. But I do really enjoy it, so we'll be playing this for a little bit, and then we'll move on to some other games. Unfortunately, Twitch doesn't actually let you do um, consoles as a category, so I had to just say I'm playing Super Mario, even though I'll be playing a load of different games tonight. And annoyingly, my laptop is going to sleep, so I can't see the chat. Ah. So I'll have to keep wiggling the mouse, I think. Anyway, this boss is super easy, so if I remember right, it's been a long time since I played this. But yeah, you can just keep sliding underneath him and just keep doing that to whittle away itself. Man, it's been ages since I actually used a proper NES controller as well. This, this feels weird. Oh, I almost messed the pack up. Yeah, see what I mean? How easy this boss is? It's pretty funny. 
It takes a lot of damage, but you don't really need to worry about anything. Ah! There we go, one down. And yeah, there's the original mess controller. It's, it's already starting to hurt my hands because they squared off edges. So that is pretty funny. Anyway, now we're going to go on to Brightman. I'm going to see if I can change my computer to stop going to sleep. settings somewhere. Let's say you turn off after three hours. I don't think I'm going to be streaming for three hours, but that should keep the screen on the whole time. And this game was also the introduction of Rush, and there he is, the Mega Man Classic. So let's move on to Brightman, I think is next. Let's try it. But yeah, how are you guys tonight? I've been so excited to do this stream, so I'm so glad that it's finally up and running. I was having a lot of issues trying to get it all to work, especially with the the bottom camera down there as well, so you can see the CRT that I'm playing on. So, yes, I finally figured it all out. I think there's still a lot I can do to improve the audio, but uh, maybe I'll, I'll save that for next time. And if everyone does enjoy these, like, original... Oh, damn it. If everyone does enjoy these original console streams, I'll definitely try and do some more in the future. I eventually want to go through all of my, like, co classic consoles that I grew up with and do videos and streams for all of them, so think of this one as a trial run, and if this goes well then I'll, I'll continue the theme in the future and we can go through the SNES, the Mega Drive, and I'm going to wait for that thing to come back so the floor can light up. Come on. There's one. So yeah, can you hit them? And then you can actually see where the pit, where the pits are. I'll, I'll, I won't I won't just play this game tonight. I'll try and play some other games as well. But I do really love this game. So if I get a little bit carried away, then I do apologise. Ages ago, I did actually stream through all the Mega Man games. All of the 8-bit ones. I'll show you what Rush does as well, because now we've got Rush. We've got the Rush Coil and the Rush Marine. The Rush Coil is just a basic jump like that, so you can get up to higher places. And there is a half pickup right there. And the Rush Marine, as the name suggests, is for use underwater. And it's kind of like a submarine. It feels weird playing this game without auto fire as well because the versions I'm used to, you can set it so you just hold the button down and constantly fire, but now I feel like I'm going to be charging up the Mega Buster a lot more, which is something that was actually new for this game, which is a really cool addition to the series. Although it does make some of the regular enemies a little bit too easy, in my opinion. Let's see what's down here. This was also one of the first Mega Man games with branching paths as well. So if you go this way, you get an extra item at the end. Whoa! Oh no, I didn't quite get far enough. That's where Rush comes in handy. There we go, what do we get over here? An E-Tank and a 1-Up. Both really useful things. I don't know if I can make that jump. No way. Do I have enough rush left to get through this? Have I just sent him straight down the pit? There we go, one more. Nope. I presume I'm meant to be going back this way. Yeah, there we go. Got a few extras there. How's everything looking and sounding on the stream? It looks okay, hopefully. Oh, Seer of the Night, thank you as well for the follow. I haven't got my usual setup, so I miss all the audio cues, unfortunately. I couldn't get it so that I could hear the game in the headphones. 
so unfortunately I won't be able to hear any audio for this stream. But like I said, this one is kind of a test run, so if I do get it working in the future, then um, I'll definitely try and get it set up better next time. And maybe we can play some more NES games later on in the week. Oh, that was close, almost went in the spike zone. And don't worry, anyone who's a, a regular here on Twitch, I will be going back to playing Pokemon again at some point in time. But my girlfriend's a bit busy at the minute because we've got Comic Con coming up. So she's busy drawing tonight. And I'll use that to refill Rush, as we just used them up quite a bit. It's not back to the Mega Master. It is so nostalgic playing this game as well, because I think this game, more than anything else, is the one that I played as a kid, like, over and over again. You know what kids are like. They can play games for, like, thousands of hours and never, never ever get bored of them. I think I need to go and light that room off again. Fireworks, I don't know what you guys can hear that. I don't know why I'm charging up, I really don't need to. Ooh, short jump there, and we did it! All in the light too. And there we are, we're at the boss. And I believe for this boss we need to use Toadman's weapon, which is the rain. I can't remember what it's called, Rain Stopper, something like that. Anyway, here we go, boss number two. This is Bright Man. And yeah, someone is setting off fireworks outside. Oh, I don't want to be stuck in the corner. Oh, I do have an E tank, so I can. Oh, I don't know how to dodge them. Can I, can I do it? Come on, one more hit, one more hit! Yes, just did it! I'm using one of the camera mics rather than the main mic. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the microphone, because it should be that. What about... Hello, hello, hello. How's that? Does that sound better? I have so many different audio options on OBS. I might have fixed it. Excellent. Yeah, I've got I've got so many different audio settings. It's just a nightmare to try and figure out which one's which. So anyway, we're on to Pharaoh Man. Oh, thank you for telling me that. Else, I would have spent this whole stream using like the microphone from the camera over there or something. It's my own fault for trying to be clever and trying to play it on a CRT rather than just streaming it from an emulator or something. But I wanted to get the proper, you know, proper nostalgic experience. And this level in particular is really nostalgic to me. Like, I'm sure I even had dreams of going through this desert at night with all the stars out and stuff. Oh, it's so cool to be able to play these games again after after this long. Like, on original hardware as well. It really does mean a lot to me. And I'll try and get that across in this Friday's video. But yeah, thank you, thank you so much for telling me the, uh, the problems with the stream. Right, there is a secret over here. If we use Rush Coil right on the edge. And jump over that gap. And then we can actually get one of, I believe, three secret items in the game. So if we keep going over here, we'll originally... bear with me one second. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so there's a few different items that you can pick up, separate to the normal items that you'd find throughout the levels, and one of them is hidden right at the end of this long section of quicksand. So there it is. And then that'll take us back to the start of the level. And these are kind of like the optional items in Mega Man 2 and 3. 
This one's a balloon, if I remember right. Oh, it actually starts you at the bottom of the pit. So if we press start now, yeah, we've also got the balloon. So that can help us get to some areas later on that you wouldn't be able to get to normally. And I'm really excited to show you guys Mega Man 4 as well. I don't want this to just be a Mega Man stream. Like I said, I've also got a lot of other games that I want to play as well. But I really do love this game. And, you know, this was like my main game growing up. So it's just really cool to be able to play it again on the NES. Using the NES controller the way it's meant to be played. Did any of you guys watching grow up with the NES? What are some of your favourite games for the system? Let me know. I've got a, a pretty interesting selection of games to get through tonight. These are all the ones that I remember as a kid. So none of the games that I actually bought later on in, you know, in my game collecting era, if you want to call it that. These are all ones that my parents actually bought for me when I was growing up in the 90s. And it's kind of weird because I had the NES and the SNES at the same time. Like, growing up, I had them both. But I didn't really, like, prefer one over the other. I could always really happily go between the two of them. And I didn't really think anything of it. I didn't really think, like... I didn't really think, like, oh, the NES isn't as powerful as the SNES. Or anything like that. Right, oh, this boss is easy. I forgot how easy this is. Just use the flash stopper. Oh my god. It's gonna hurt my thumb, though. Uh... <laughs> right, while I'm doing that, I can read the chat. Too young to have grown up with the NES, but I bought one last year, and I've been playing it a bunch. That's good. It's good to know that people who didn't grow up with the system can still enjoy playing it today. So, what games have you been enjoying for it? What are some of your favourite games that you've played so far? There's a few real classic games that I don't actually own yet that I really want to get. I haven't got Metroid. Oh, look how amazing this bit looks in Mega Man 4 when you get the new weapons. It just looks so cool. Look at that. Awesome. Got Pharaoh Shot. Shall I do one more level? Let's do one more. I think Ring of Man's the next one. Oh man, I'm going to end up playing through the whole game, aren't I? I wonder if there's a way of changing it to say uh, Mega Man. Mega Man 4. Yeah, there is. Okay, now we're officially playing Mega Man 4. I don't know how long for. But at this point, I feel like I just want to keep playing it, even though I've got loads of other stuff I want to get through as well. And oh, I just thought, actually, I should also be recording this to my video too. So, yeah, bear with me one second. Hopefully this doesn't break everything. I said that last time and everything broke, so I'll be back. In one second. It actually worked, oh my god. I think that's the first thing that's just worked straight away. And when I can take a break from the action on there, let me see what you just said. Zelda, Mario, Wizards and Warriors, Faxon and Do, Castlevania, Swords and Serpents. Awesome. Castlevania is a big favourite of mine. But unfortunately it's not one that I grew up with, so I'm not going to show it off in this stream, but... Castlevania 1 is kind of another game that I know off by heart, so I can easily play all the way through it now. But, such a great game. Castlevania 3 is amazing too. 
Castlevania 2, not so much. Oh yeah, we get to fight the weird hippo now. I think this is the one with the weird hippo that comes out on this podium anyway. Yeah, there it is. I don't know why there's a weird hippo in the sky. I always thought this bit was really weird as a kid. Well, I guess I didn't really question it, but I always thought the... The whole, like, climbing all the way up and then just ending up in a black void was kind of weird as a kid. I wouldn't bother getting Castlevania 2, honestly. I would just skip it and go straight to number 3. 2 is just overly confusing. Although the music's really nice. I love the music in number 2. Uh, uh Although you can, you can get them all in the Castlevania collection, though, so... If you're not really that bothered about... Oh, this bit's really awkward. You only have, like, a second here to time your jump. You gotta charge it up, go to the right, and then jump to the left, and then shoot the eyes. There we go. Just before the thing closes back up again. We've got the timing down on that. And then we have another one of these giant, weird um, hippo things to fight. I always thought it was cool that I could tell where it was going to come out of the floor as well, because the floor's sort of shaking. I don't know why there's a giant hippo on a podium. If anyone knows, let me know. Because I always thought it was super weird. Right, now I guess I can show off what the balloon does. So, we'll put the balloon down here. You can kind of use them as platforms like that. So, this is Eddie, who's another new character. And what you can do, if you don't like the item, you can just go down, go back up, and he'll respawn. And you can just keep trying until you get something good. So, I'll take that. So, there's a little hint for you. If any of you are thinking of playing Mega Man 4, then you can always do that if you don't like the item to get a different one. You don't have to pick it up straight away. And then, in this part of the level, the platforms go the other way around to what they were doing before. But it's pretty easy to time your jump properly so that you can just jump straight off. And you can also use this bit for farming as well if you want to try and get some extra weapon energy. Then these UFO things just keep respawning there. And then this one is safe because you're already going in that direction. Man, I've played this game too much. Ah, almost. I used to time it exactly so I knew how many jumps you could do there. Um, see that bit at the top? I always thought there was a way to get into that, but I don't think there is. At least I've never been able to. And here we are at boss number four. And we're going to use the Pharaoh one, which is sort of a charge up attack. Kind of like the main Mega Buster. And wait for his energy to charge up. So yeah, you sort of hold it above your head and then you can just let go and... Usually this fight is really, really frustrating if you're just using the Mega Buster. But if you're using the Pharaoh thing then it's not too bad. And then we're going on to the level with my favourite music, which is Dustman. I love the music on that one. I've been wanting to try and collect some more NES games as well, because I really want to do a top 15 slash hidden gems video for the NES. In fact, I'm thinking of going through every system that I own and doing hidden gems and top games list. Oh no, I think I chose the wrong one. Oh, I guess we can try and take on Drillman. Ah, oh, this music's awesome too. This music also has some really... This level has some really bad slowdown. Oh, nice, got a one-up. Yeah, I went to the wrong level here, so I don't think I've got any super effective weapons. So we'll see whether I can beat the boss with just the Mega Buster. Possibly. I've done it before. When I was a kid, I didn't realise that you were supposed to use the weapons for the bosses. So I do have a lot of practice of just using the normal... Normal Mega Buster for the bosses in the game. And now you got these weird creepy bats. These always creeped me out as a kid. Come on. 
They reminded me of um, the enemy from Power Rangers. Rita, is it? I'm not sure why. I don't know whether she looks like that or not. I can't really remember. But I remember being creeped out as a kid. Should we try and get another one up? Let's try. It's a bit risky. Yes, got it. And we're free! There we go, another one up. How many have I got now? Six. Pretty good going. There's a cool bit in a minute where the platforms sort of create themselves as you're jumping across them. Which I always used to enjoy. Not just yet. Oh no! Damn, I didn't quite make that jump there. Where is it going to restart me? Back at the beginning? No, we didn't get halfway. The joys of classic Mega Man. If you don't reach a halfway point, it's back to the start. Maybe I should make a rule. If I die three times, then it's on to the next game. Because so I want you guys to have a good range of games tonight. And I want to experience some more of my childhood favourites as well. Okay. It's a shame the 1UP doesn't reappear there. I think in, uh, in other Mega Man games it does. In some of them at least. I know if you die and if you do the level again you can get the 1UP back. But apparently not in this one. I'm going to use Rush, or maybe use a Balloon, actually. Ah, not Rush Marine. What am I doing? Just that, just to be safe. Does anyone else never use any of the normal... any of the extra weapons in the level itself? Do you always save them for the bosses like I do? Apart from, obviously, in some of the wily stages where you need to use them. I always felt that giving you limited weapon energy kind of made it feel like I never wanted to use the weapons. Which is a shame, because some of them are really, really fun to use. Good evening! I can't see your username. One second. Retro Dregs, good evening. How are you this evening? Ah, I'm not doing very well here. Give me some health. Ah, oh, really? Oh my god, I'm gonna be stuck in an endless loop of exploding rocks. I hate them bits, not being able to see. Okay, we've got a little slither of health. Oh, almost didn't make that. I wonder if you can use those rocks as farming points, maybe? Or at least these flying things. Oh my god, is nothing going to drop anything for me? No. Maybe it knows I was trying to farm. Yeah, always hold him for the boss. Right, I'm not actually meant to be at this boss yet, because I don't have his weakness. I clicked on the wrong one by mistake. I think this one is weak against Dustman, but I think I went there at the wrong time. So let's see whether I can... Uh, I'm scared. Whether I can get anywhere with just using the Mega Buster! Probably not. Not a chance. You enjoyed my Play Expo videos, that's good. I put a lot of effort into making that main Play Expo video, so I'm really glad people enjoyed it. So, thanks. Thanks for watching both of them. Let's try again. I feel like I'm going to use up all my lives here. Ah, 
I don't really know what I'm supposed to do in terms of getting away from him. Okay, do that, do that more. Oh god, oh god, oh god! Oh my god, that's extreme. How are you supposed to dodge all that? See what I mean? The bosses are way more challenging. If you just use the Mega Buster! Duh! Okay, okay. E-Tank. I can do this. Ah, I hurt my hand then. Oh my god, my heart is racing. Seriously, that's impossible! Wow. Who's extreme? Okay, you're going back under. We got this. Gonna pop up over there. It takes ages to reappear. Yay, we did it! There we go, one more down. Boom! We got the drill bomb! Which we shouldn't have yet. So, let's go to where we were supposed to go. Oh yeah, we got Rust Jet as well. Cool. So, let's go to Dustman, which is what I meant to click on. Da -da 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 -da. Dustman's music is awesome. Hopefully you can hear this. Diveman as well has an awesome tune in this in this game. Right, you have to watch out for them pits there. Because they have those really annoying spinning enemies that come out of them. I learned that the hard way as a kid. Never trust the pits in Mega Man. Okay, I don't remember if there's anything over there or not. Let's try using Rush Jet now that we've got him. Nope, it's a trick! It's not like Pharaoh Man's stage where there's an extra item hidden away. I'll try not to sing along, but what a what a great soundtrack. Skull Man's really good as well. You'll hear that one in a minute. I think Skull Man's next, actually. Oh, this is the bit that I was remembering from the other stage. I've gotten mixed up. But, yeah, why wow, the Ness really... Really struggles to handle that many sprites on screen at once. I never understood why there's like weird helicopter ladybirds flying after you in this level. You bought this game in a bargain bin for 10 quid. Wow. Best 10 quid ever spent. This bit used to absolutely terrify me as a kid. And now that I don't have turbo fire on the controller, I might be terrified as an adult as well. Let's see. This bit's okay, but there's a bit later on where you can actually get squashed. And obviously, if you don't destroy all the blocks on the top there as well, that can squash you. These bits here can, so you have to slide under them. Let's wait a bit longer, clear the next few rows out, and then go! Oh, oh my god, that was close! Whoa! I don't think I've ever been that close to dying on that section before, wow. Oh my god, my heart is pounding. That was crazy. <laughs> oh, wow. I think I was literally one pixel away from instant death then. Oh my god. I'm glad the control is working well though, considering how old it is and how long it's been since I actually used the proper NES controller. And I'm also really surprised that the game booted up first time as well without any problems. Alright, now we are at Dustman. And... Where did we just come from? I've thrown myself off my usual pattern now. Ring, I think. 
Mm -hmm. I it was. Just man's pretty easy anyway, so. Okay. Let's charge this up. Maybe? I've completely forgotten. No, that didn't seem to do much. But he's a pushover compared to Drill Man, anyway. Oh, maybe that actually is pretty powerful. Maybe? But yeah, as long as you know when to jump over over the block so that he fires at you, he really isn't a problem at all. Let's see what else we got. Right? I guess. Oh no, it doesn't stop him at all. That's no good. What's the point of even flashing if it's not going to do anything? What else have we got? I'll just keep using drill. That seems to do something. Someone's probably watching this screaming at me like, Why didn't you get that specific item first? When I figure out what item I missed, I'll write it down so I remember for next time. There we go. Finish him off with a quick Mega Buster. A little pea shooter in his dust pipe. Yunus takes a few wiggles before booting up. Yeah, I'm really surprised this one booted up first time. No issues. I remember struggling as a kid, always having to wiggle it around or put it in slightly, not all the way in, so that it pushes down really tight. Like, there was a load of little tricks I had to get the games to work. <clears throat> right, where to next? I guess we can go to either of them. Let's go to Skullman. Probably my most memorable level because of the bit at the end where the sky goes red. I loved that bit as a kid. And this music as well. Another banger. Man, the NES had so great soundtracks. So many great soundtracks. But like I said, I'll try not to sing along. I'm sure you guys don't want to hear me just humming for several hours. Which I would definitely be doing if I wasn't streaming. Oh, silently. Just bob my head. Those skeleton enemies, they're really annoying if you don't charge up your shot. They just crumble to the floor and then they get back up again. There's also a load of different branching paths in this level as well. With all sorts of different items that you can pick up. I really didn't need that, but whatever. And more of those freaky bats that used to terrorise me. I don't know why, there's just something so ominous about them. I really hate them. Let's see, what have you got for us this time, Eddie? An energy tank, I'll take it. Like I said earlier, if you don't like the item, you can actually just leave and come back and get a different one. Right. This is the bit that always used to confuse me. Like, There's so many different paths that you can take here, and then there's three different items at the end. But I guess you don't really need to go round because by this point you would already have either Rush or the Balloons or whatever. So you can just do that. And I wonder if there's any sort of attack that can get rid of those. No, isn't there one on the bottom? Yeah, there is. Oh, fantastic! The first time I've actually used a weapon and it actually does something. Maybe I'll keep this one equipped for a bit. Oh my god, I think that's the first time... Hey, it even works on them from behind. Awesome. This is the first time I've actually tried using a weapon. I did not expect that to work as well as it does. Shall we try and get the energy tank? I always used to be really scared doing this. Do I make it easier for myself? Maybe. 
Whoops. Let's get the ring back out. As long as I don't need the ring for the boss, I don't think I do. Here we go, easy. Ooh, I don't like the idea of that. I'm going back this way. If you can control Rust Jet in all directions, which I think you can. <gasps> no! He hit the side! Is he one that just goes forward in this game then? I'm getting my Mega Man's mixed up. Well, luckily there was a checkpoint halfway. I'm going to test it here and see what Rush Jet actually does. Yeah, he does. He just goes forward. In some of the games, you get full control on him. Damn. Well, there's no point going down there now anyway, because the E-Tank's gone. But it was worth it. If we get some weapon energy, I'll top the ring back up. And because I'm a scaredy cat, let's use some balloons there. I did not use, need to use that third one. I don't know why that platform's at the top if there's absolutely nothing up there. There we go, let's get our ring energy back. Or maybe I would have been better off getting the balloon energy back, but we'll go with that. Now we're moving on to the really cool bit, which used to really scare me as a kid. And that skeleton guy there, the way he crumbles back down, right at the edge of the screen. There we go, got him. And an extra life. So yeah, if you charge up until he starts flashing green, then, then you can actually kill them without them resetting, which is great. And there is a big line of extra health up there as well. In case, like me, you didn't manage to get there in one piece. There we go, now we're on to Skullman, who is usually a really, really terrifying boss. So let's see whether we can make quick work of him with the dust attack. If I remember right, that seems to be doing damage. There's nothing you can do about his shield. Ah, his bullet patterns. They're just too fast to be able to jump over. But we did it! That's another one down. Hey, Geon's here. I think this is the first time we've seen me play something that isn't Pokemon, right? There we go, that is another boss down. I didn't think I'd be playing all the way through Mega Man 4 tonight, but here we are. I may as well at this point. Oh, fantastic! Mega Man 4 is your favourite as well. Awesome. Yeah, I hope you enjoy this then. I've been having a blast playing through it again so far. So we've only got one more left. Dive Man. And like Gion said, what an awesome soundtrack this game has. Dive Man in particular was one of my favourites back in the day. Ah, oh, listen to how good this is. Such a rocking soundtrack. It doesn't get better than this on the NES. As a kid, I had um, a tape recorder where you could record sound onto cassette tape. And I would just have the TV turned up and put the tape recorder next to the TV and record Dive Man's theme onto the tapes. I don't know why Dive Man's theme in particular. It was that and Skull Man. I always used to go back to those two. But yeah, I always thought this was just so amazing to hear coming out of the NES. Now we get to fight the giant whale. Here he is. Gonna fire torpedoes at me and make some weird. He didn't even get round to throwing the torpedoes at me. And whatever those weird things are that come down off the top of the screen. I also just love this water level in particular anyway. It's so much better than some of the other Mega Man water levels. And Eddie, give me something good. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll take it. I was tempted to just go back and forth to get an E-Tank, but whatever. I'll take a big health pickup. I don't remember whether them ones jump higher or whether they always just do that low down jump.
Oh yeah, and then we've got the water level rising and falling, and the robot um, stingrays. Which are really annoying, because they change direction as they're coming towards you. Uh, damn. Thought I'd have got through there. Maybe I should have waited to get an A-Tank. And then, the thing that's different this time, it's actually dragging you towards him, but... He's still a pushover. <clears throat> now, here we get another secret at the bottom of this long, spiky tower. Which, if you stay where I am, and go slightly to the right, now I think I'm safe. Yep. And we get the second special item. I can't remember what this one is. I think it's kind of like the magnet one from Mega Man 1. Oh, wire. Yeah, it's like a grapple hook, I remember. Not really sure when you'd need to use that. But it's cool to have, I guess. Just means that we need to redo this bit of the level. And I've done that part a lot better that time. I didn't get hit once. So we get to fight this again. Ah, didn't do that as well, though. And make sure we don't fall down there again. It's kind of weird hiding a secret down what you would think is just a bottomless pit. It's a bit annoying that they didn't like highlight it differently or something. Oh, that is close! So many spikes everywhere! And more spikes up there. And just keep sliding under everything here. And there we go, into the boss room. You want to get some more Mega Man games for the NES, but they're all pretty expensive. They're expensive, but they're worth it. I'd say. They're all amazing games. But Mega Man 4 is the best one. Try and get that one. I have no idea um, how much it is these days. Oh, wow. Okay, that didn't do as well as I thought. Let's use any tank. I was being a bit too uh, eager. Man, the, the bosses in Mega Man 4 are like extremely um, aggressive. Especially compared to Mega Man 3, they were so easy in Mega Man 3, and then this one they're like almost impossible to dodge, but I seem to be doing okay. Content not owning two. Each one is... Oh, God, yeah, Mega Man 5 on the Game Boy. That one's like several hundred pounds now, isn't it? Crazy. There we go. That is all of the Robot Masters down. Now we're on to the Wily Castle. Or the Cossack Castle. Spoilers. But once again, we've got some awesome music coming up. And I was always really excited as a kid to see this flash and then change to this guy that I'd never seen before. It's like, whoa, now there's a whole castle to go and explore. This is amazing. It still is amazing. And we get two different castles this time in Mega Man 4. We get Dr. Kosak's castle and then we get Dr. Wily's castle as well. So here we go, Dr. Kosak stage one. And enjoy the music. Again, what an awesome tune. And the first thing we need to fight is a slinky, for some reason. I love the silhouettes of the trees in the background though, it looks really cool. Oh yeah, and we've got ice physics, so... It is a bit slippery, but there really isn't anything to worry about in this first section. Yeah, I've got the Japanese versions of the Game Boy ones. I don't think there's any chance of me getting the UK ones for a while. Come on, are you going to let me attack you? Yikes, I lost most of my health on that thing. So yeah, I need to start to learn to use some of the actual weapons. Yeah, two in one. So 
before I wait for it to come up again, just in case. Never trust a pit in Mega Man. There'll always be something waiting to kill you. Huh. I don't think I've even used any weapons to need any energy for. No. Does anyone know of a, a good weapon to use in this stage? I've probably got something that I can use to take him out from there, right? Let's try that. Did that actually damage him at all? I don't think it did. I'm going to go and refuel. Just in case I need it. Is there anything I could use to hit him from there? Maybe dust if it explodes properly. No. Good evening! Uh, Sonus Leo, hello, how are you doing this evening? Right. I'm just going to charge up and just hit him on the way down. Oh, that was close! I know he got hit by two things. Slinkies are the best home defense. Apparently. I don't know what you're actually meant to do there, probably just use Rush, but I always use the balloon because I feel like it's more safe. It's the safe way to get through it. Uh, this bit's kind of horrible as well. I can't remember if there's anything different at the top of some of them. Okay, cool. Some weapon energy. I suppose the best thing to do here would be to use Rush Jet. I'm scared, I'm scared! Ah. No! Oh no! Oh, damn it. Mega Man was a game you always wanted to play but never mastered. Yeah, definitely go back to it, especially now that things like the Mega Man Legacy Collections are out. They're really easy to get into, there's so many ways of playing them today. And they're still really fun as well. Like, don't be put off that they're NES games. Like, they still feel... I honestly feel like they could come out today as indie games and they would still get really high scores. They definitely... They're, they're like a timeless game, in my opinion. Maybe I'm biased because I grew up with it, but I honestly think that anyone could get into Mega Man. Even if you've never played them. Especially the classic ones, because they're just so... Not simple, but they're so... Uh... I don't know what the word is, they're just like... Classic. In a good way. Yeah. There's just something about the Mega Man games that have aged better than... the majority of the rest of the NES library. I don't know what it is about them, but... Yeah, there, there's some games on the NES that I really struggle to go back and play today, but then, you know, give me Mega Man 4 and I'll happily play it for hours and hours and hours. Just, there's just so much nuance to them. Like, they seem simple, but there's a ton of hidden depth to it, and the levels are all really well designed, the music's still just as catchy today as it was when they came out. Hopefully I'm selling it to you. Go and play Mega Man. Now we're on to the first of the big bosses. Dr. Kosak's first enemy. And epilepsy warning for anyone who doesn't like flashing images. Ah. Oh no, I'm not doing too well here. Yay! I always love the way they use the black background to make the really, really big enemies because they actually use the background tiles and move them across the screen, which I think is really clever. There we go, that is the first Dr. Kosak level down. What other games on the NES do you think have aged well? aged well. Obviously Mario 3, I think that's a timeless classic. And the amount of effort that Nintendo put into making that game as big and like as feature packed as it could possibly be. 
They really did an amazing job with it. Ow. That's not fair. That just came and landed right in my head. There's nothing I could do to stop that. Apart from that. Okay, maybe there was something I could do. Again, enjoy the amazing soundtrack uh, as I jump into a pit of spikes. Now you'll see that the game starts to get a lot more challenging as well. Now that we've reached these levels. <clears throat> right, I'll try going up the other side, see whether that way is easier. How many lives have I got? I've got four. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do this. I did it as a kid, I can do it now. Surely. I My skills haven't aged backwards, I hope. Come on. You'd think a tiny little gap like that would be easy to get across. Yay. It was. Now we need Rush Jet. Good job he's got full. I feel like I'm a little bit too far back, so I'm kind of scared of jumping here. No, I didn't want the one up. Oh no, I'm missing everything. Can I jump off? Yes, let's wait for him to go. So, you have to constantly worry about your fuel going down when you're in jet mode. So you'll always want to try and top it up. Oh god, that's scary. Okay, phew, we're through. I guess I can kind of cheat here. Can I use the wire? No, there's nothing to latch onto. Could use the balloon, maybe? Like, ladders like that. Ha! I cheated my way through that room. That works. Uh, I guess I'll keep the balloons out and go and top them back up. That worked. So I mean, there's so many clever ways that you can just get through the different areas by using all the all the different weapons that you picked up throughout the game. Some of the Mega Man games do it better than others. I really like the the ones in Mega Man 5. Um, I'm going to call it Pulse Man's Castle, but it's not Pulse Man. Ooh, energy tank. I want that. No! Uh, Proto Man? Or Blue's Castle? It's something like that. Dark Man's Castle, maybe? You know the one I'm on about. Oh, some of you might. Oh, come on, I just want to go down the side there. It's not even going to be worth getting it at this rate. How are you supposed to do that? Okay, finally, finally got through. In drill to break through there. And then if we use the wire again to go back up to the ceiling. Bionic commando style. There we go, now we've got another energy tank. And now that horrible thing on the wall is out to kill me. There we go. And we got a one up up there as well. Let's see if I can skip these out and just use the wire all the way to the ceiling. Ah! Cheated a bit there. No, I can't remember what i got to use for this one. Congrats on getting the 20k. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is actually going to be part of my 20,000 subscribers like special video that's coming out on Friday. I'm going to be talking about some of my memories with the NES. Oh yeah, I don't really think there's anything in particular that I can actually use on this level. Hmm. 
You just need to. There must be something I can use to do a bit more damage, maybe. Or I'll just use the Mega Buster and just keep hitting the thing in the middle. Again, epilepsy warning for anyone who needs to worry about that. I forget how much these games like to flash the screen like uncontrollably. And I can see why they uh, they had to tone it down on the virtual console. Oh god, I need an energy tank right now. Yeah, on the on the virtual console, they actually made all the NES games like um, a bit duller than they're meant to be. Because a lot of them, for some reason, had like huge screen flashing effects like that for no good reason. I guess they just thought it was look it looked cool, and there's not that much you can do with the NES. There we go, done better that time. I don't know how many times I need to do this. It's kind of an easy boss, considering how far in the game we are. Whee! Okay, that works, you can go underneath it too. Right, the last, this third time round, you don't want to do that. I don't know what this is even supposed to be, like... Is this supposed to be, like, some sort of defense for his castle? I really don't understand what I'm looking at here. What is this? Just, like, some weird computerized room with a big red eye in the middle of it. Come on! How many hits is it going to take? No. Seriously? Am I going to use another energy tank? There must be a faster way of getting through this. Yay, there we go. Finally. Damn it, I didn't need to use that A-tank. level three. There's five levels on this and I think there's another four on the Dr. Wily side as well. Again, more awesome music. Oh yeah, this one's an auto-scroller. Mega Man 3, or Mario 3 vibes, should I say. Except the Mario 3 one was a little bit more forgiving. Obviously Mega Man is known for being a pretty unfair platforming series. But this seems pretty easy. It's moving pretty slow as well. Do I need to top anything up? Oh, yeah, I guess ring maybe. I can never remember what sort of attacks I'm meant to use when. I always just make it up as I go along, really. Well, in this part of the game, anyway, I can remember most of the normal enemies. Most of the normal bosses. That was a weirdly easy auto-scroller. Old-school Dark Souls. Right, there must be something that can take these out, then. Surely there must be. Ah, okay, ring again. Ring seems like a really good weapon. I'll keep ring out. As long as I don't need it for the midway point. Oh, great, now we've got disappearing platforms. 
Okay, moving platforms. Not too bad. I could have sworn that ring you can fire in all directions. Maybe I'm mixing it up with something from Mega Man 5 instead. Weird, those platforms actually go up, making it easier for you. I've never known a platformer give you platforms like that that actually make the game easier. I mean, I guess you need to make sure you're on that one soon enough. Ah, right, and then here. Probably haven't got time to do it now. Oh, no, it's okay. Uh, yeah, put a balloon down on that side. And then you should be able to slide under. Yay, there we go. That's a neat way of using that as a, a little bonus for you picking the balloon up. Now, let's try ring, see if that does anything. I feel like that's the best weapon. Oh, yeah, this one's difficult, if I remember right. <clears throat> or scary. No, mm, it didn't really do anything. Let's try drill. Maybe that does a little bit more. When's it going to start doing something horrible to me? Whoa, no way. Okay, now we got another one. I'm just staying in the middle. I feel like that's the safest place to be. Wave to the camera. <laughs> How are you going to do that? Everyone can see you. <laughs> it's a bit late now. Rude. Okay, guys, are you ready for a rude prank? Okay. No, come on, you can't say that and then not do it. <laughs> come on, what are you doing? I'll pretend I didn't know you were there. Show me what that is. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> what? Oh uh, no, I'm okay. I'm still halfway through this. Oh, my God! Can't believe you. <laughs> How did she not think that I would hear her opening the door? Pharaoh. Okay, right. Charged up Pharaoh. Oh, okay. You can hit him as he's coming round. I guess that's the hint, is it? The fact that his attack looks like the Pharaoh attack. Okay, he's nearly dead anyway. Let's just wait here for him. Yeah, easy. Is that it? That's it. Oh, sorry, a few people followed me and I didn't realise. I haven't got my headphones in, so I don't get the usual pop-ups on the bottom. So, thank you to Cheeky Boy, thank you to Gone Mad Tryin', and thank you to MP1462. Thank you so much. Really hope you're enjoying the stream so far. And here we are in the final of Dr. Kosak's levels. And I think I've already gone past some... Well, I don't need any weapon energy, I don't think, anyway. Right, chat, you can help me out when I get to the boss, tell me what weapon I'm meant to use. Obviously, I need to use the drill there. Well, I could have used with refilling the drill as well. Why would it give you a full health recharge this early in the stage when you don't need one yet? <clears throat> Just normal buster on this one. Okay, easy. Oh, yeah, I remember this level. This one's kind of weird because you can take two different routes. Right, if you go up here. If I use wire, I guess. Up there. Then use the drill. This will take you to a different part of the stage, but I think it eventually loops back round. Can you have more than five energy tanks? 
for sure. Oh, yeah, you can. I know that there is a limit, but I can't remember what it was. Alright, so if I find any weapon energy, I'm refilling the drill. Man, I love the Mega Man games so much. Hopefully you're all enjoying this. I wasn't planning on just playing Mega Man. But I feel like, at this point, I may as well play it all the way through to the end. There's no point going for that. I love the fact that all the levels have that random empty room as well. It's like a moment to relax before everything kicks off again. Ow. I want to refill the drill. And my own health. Right, you say Mega Buster for this one. <clears throat> Yeah, this is the first game. I only started streaming an hour ago. I was hoping to stream earlier than that, but I was having a lot of trouble getting this all set up and working properly. And a load of issues with the sound and all sorts of things going wrong. Are you going to do anything? Dr. Cossack? Okay, I spoke too soon. He's going to not really do much. Pretend to try and pick me up, but not really do anything. Come on, you're gonna do anything? No! Ah! Okay, okay, that was my fault. I was teasing him. Ow. Oh, come on. There's not even that many bullets. It shouldn't be that hard. Oh my god, what's going on? I'm not really this bad at games, guys. Honestly, honestly, honestly! I will not use any tank. Okay. Now what's going on? <gasps> Proto Man and Kalinka, I believe her name is. Please, Mega Man, don't! My father is not really evil! Dr. Wily took me hostage and forced my father to fight you. Please, Mega Man, don't hurt my father anymore. Oh, Kalinka, father. Mega Man, forgive me! You betrayed me, Proto Man! I'm gonna break you, Mega Man! Now we get the proper Dr. Wily levels. Okay, now we're on to the proper Dr. Wily level. And again, some awesome music. As is a running theme with all Mega Man Dr. Wily stages. few modded consoles, do you think it's best to modernise consoles with HDMI or should they be played as intended? It's a difficult difficult question. Um, it depends what your setup's like, I guess. Uh, for me, I'm happy if I can just get a good RGB signal. They don't really need to be HDMI. <clears throat> HDMI is nice for some of the more modern systems, like I've got a HDMI mod for my PS2, and I think that's really cool. And the GameCube. So, maybe systems like that, but for... Ah! For things like the N64, the NES, NES, Mega Drive, stuff like that. I don't really think you need HDMI for that. It won't really improve them that much. 
or it will make them too clear and then it looks a bit like weirdly fake does that make any sense oh my god so many spikes oh god you have to get your jump time in perfect for them sections and here as well yes I was lucky to get through that on my second try. I was honestly expecting disappearing platforms. Oh, there they are. They're just a bit late. I can't reach you! No, no! Okay, well, we know Ring takes that thing out, so let's do that. Maybe I can skip ahead a bit. Or use Rush Coil. See if that works in the water. Maybe we can skip out the whole thing. Aha! We can skip the whole thing out! Awesome! And then here is a better place to use Rush Jet. Before the bricks come and stop you from moving. Ah, not quite. Rush Jet and then Wire. And then we can skip that bit out as well. I know, it's kind of cheating, but I hate disappearing platforms. And then, uh... I guess... Refill Rush Jet? Chat, what do I need for this boss that's coming up? Or shall I just wing it again? And make it up as I'm going along. Another E-Tank. One that's just standing there out in the open. Sure. I'll take it. Thank you, Dr. Wiley. Hmm. Yeah, what does anyone else watching think about whether you need to have HDMI mods for retro consoles or anything or whether it's okay to just use you know, what they come with or do a slight upgrade to make them RGB compatible or whatever ah Again, a very weirdly simple end of stage boss. Ness looks better on the CRT. Yeah, definitely. Can you see the CRT that I'm playing it on in the stream? Is it actually legible? I tried to have it so the TV in the corner is on the little bit at the bottom, but I don't know whether you can actually see it properly or not. Yeah, I love playing the NES on the CRT, especially as so many games use completely black backgrounds. I think it lends itself really well to playing on the CRT. Oh my god, I'm nearly dead. So is he though. Come on! One more hit! Yeah, we did it. Didn't need to use any tank. That was close. Oh, Pharaoh. Ah, oh, never mind. I just saw the chat then. Yeah, I had to do a lot of weird cable routing to be able to actually capture the NES at the same time as playing it on this CRT. So I'm really glad I figured it out, because it's a great way to play it. And obviously you get the benefits of not having any lag due to the upscaler either, by playing it directly on the CRT. So that's a bonus. I think we're nearly done with the game. I think there's only two levels left. Do we go and get another? Sure, why not? I don't need a third balloon. Three balloons is for wimps. Gion, what level, uh, what weapon do I need for this boss? If anything. Or will I be okay with the Mega Buster like I've been so far? Yes, perfect. 
I like it when you use a weapon and then you just instantly get a refill. So, can we get up there? Easy. Do -do 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 -do. Eddie! No. You can give me something better than that. I want an extra life. I love doing that to him. Just like, no, I want something better. Give me something better. That's what I wanted. Thank you. He listened. What is in there? What's the point of that? You're not going to hurt yourself on it because you don't actually start in a in range of getting hit by it. <laughs> Ring or charged up Buster. Okay. Hey, we got the Pharaoh baddies back again. Ah. Okay, ignore that one. I kind of want that health, but probably not worth it. Oh man, my thumb's starting to ache playing the NES. I forgot the controller can be kind of painful. I thought that was going to come down there and get in my way then. I do feel that this level is kind of weirdly simple. Like, did they run out of all their ideas before they got to this point? Let's try it with the ring. First time chat from studio, load him. Hey, thanks for joining. I do actually, I have a dog bone controller somewhere, but I don't know where it is. That's a good point actually, maybe I should try and find it. Anyway. Let's... Yeah, I'm using my original NES controller from when I was a kid. I've found out all my old stuff, so I was really excited to get it all in one place. Oh my god. Whoa, okay. This boss is actually trying to kill me, unlike the last game. <laughs> Why did I sound like Mario falling down a pit, but with a deeper voice? Okay, we seem to be doing okay. Whoa, lots of dodging going on here, though. One more hit. Yeah, easy. I like that boss. That was an actual challenge. Thank you. Cool design, too. No, I thought the dog bone controller was in there, but it was a SNES controller. I'll have to suffer through the pain just for this stream. Right, another E-Tank. I don't know how many E-Tanks I can carry, but I think I've maxed out now, surely. Nine E-Tanks and six lives. And here we are in the last part of the game now. I honestly did not expect to be playing all the way through Mega Man 4 tonight, but here we are. One of my favourite games, not just on the NES, one of my favourite games of all time, easily. I just love the whole of the original Mega Man series so much. Is it generous about E-Tanks, or am I just doing really well? No, I think it, I think it is really overly generous. A lot of people think that the NES Mega Man games are really difficult, but they're not really that challenging. Like once you once you've played them a few times, you can pretty easily whiz through the original Mega Man games, no problem. It just feels daunting. Scoop. 
Skullman, Dust Crusher. I remember these ones, okay. I think. Except Skullman is terrifying because of how fast he shoots, and if you mess one up, you're pretty much guaranteed to mess up. Oh, come on, that that was the controller's fault. I jumped over that. Okay, that's one down. <clears throat> Dive man. I think I can use dust on him as well. Hey, come on. Let me get a hit in. Ah, leave me alone. Why is that missile following me? Go away. Oh my god. Hey, I'm doing pretty well though. I haven't got a hit yet. Ah, I spoke too soon. Right, one more hit. One more hit. Yes. Okay, two down. I love this part about Mega Man games. It's so exhilarating. Right. Toad Man doesn't... Does he actually have a weakness? I have no idea. I've always just... Blah, blah, blah. You really don't need to do anything. I don't know why they made him like this. I don't know whether it's a glitch. He does actually have attacks. But as long as you just keep going under his legs like that, he really can't do anything. Ah! Okay, unless I mess up or unless I blame the controller. The music's more scary than the actual fight. <laughs> Ow, my thumb. Ah! You're not sure if there's even nine E tanks in Mega Man 2. Maybe not, although I think Mega Man 2 is a lot easier than Mega Man 4 anyway. Just in general, it's a lot easier. No, Dustman. I don't know whether Dustman has a weakness either. I thought he did earlier, but as I was playing it, I didn't really seem like I was doing any extra damage with anything. But He's a really easy boss, probably the second easiest after Toadman anyway. Oh, Mega Man 2 on the UK NES as well is a lot easier because it actually runs a lot slower than what it should do. You know what I might play after this as a complete change of pace? I'm just having a look at the games that are up there. Might put on some Tetris next, some classic NES Tetris. And you can all see my Tetris skills. Oh my god, I was really bad at dodging them then. Maybe he is actually going to hurt me. Oh, damn. I think it's because he's so close. Uh, right, one more hit, one more hit. Phew. I was genuinely getting a bit worried then. Okay, next one. Ring Man. Pharaoh Man, I think. If we've still got any. Oh god. Yeah, I forgot how scary Ring Man is to dodge as well. Because they like boomerang back. Ah, so close! Ah, oh, one more hit. That would have got him. Ah. And yeah, while you can replenish your energy, you don't replenish your weapon energy. So we might have to do this the hard way. Oh my god, it's so fast as well. Oh man, I've not got the timing down whatsoever. This is where all the E-Tanks go to die. I don't have much 
pharaoh power either. Let's try and charge a bit up. That's it, all gone. I think the bosses in Mega Man 4 are probably the most challenging in the series if you don't use their powers. Because, damn, they, they move so fast! You barely get a second to react. Ah, my thumb again. Okay, we've got three left. We can do this. Pharaoh man. He's easy at least. Uh, right man, doesn't it? Wait until he lands on the floor. And then just keep doing that. And I'll use this time to have a drink. Okay, that was a bit dangerously close. Oh my god, he did actually hit me. Okay, now he's not going to do anything. Ah, this is what I wish. I had turbo fire. Okay, he's dead. Two more. And my hands are just crumbling into a pile of NES controller. Ah, hard edges. Now, drill man. I don't know, because last time I did drill man, I just did a normal. I'll see what I haven't used. Oh god, I hate drill man so much. What haven't I used at all? Toad? Maybe? Does the toad do anything? Not really. Dive. I haven't used that one yet. I might get. I hate this one because I don't know how long it's going to be until he pops up. Ah! I hate the way he stops as well. It's like there's not enough time to jump over him. I need these E-Tanks. Okay, I think the dive was doing something. Yeah. There must be, like, a certain amount of seconds that you can time while he's in the ground. Ah, why do you stop every time I try and jump over? Okay, we're nearly done. Last one. This is the one you use Toadman's weapon on. Uh, again, he's still quite a difficult one to, to dodge. I'm going to try and keep your distance. Oh no, I've run out. Come on, one more hit! Yes! Oh, I was really worried he was going to freeze me again then. <sighs> okay. Now we are on to Dr. Wily himself. Gion, what do I need? Help me out here. What do I need for Dr. Wily? Apart from a lot of patience. Maybe it's actually easier to dive under these. Oh no. Maybe I just need to be really patient and just wait for all three to go and then fire. That seems to be... Oh god, that one was coming too low. Now what? Oh no, oh no, that's not doing anything. That's not doing anything. Pharaoh. Is it Pharaoh for this? Oh no, I haven't got any Pharaoh left. Is there anything else I can use? An e tank. Let's try drill, maybe? No. Am I screwed? Is there nothing I can do? I 
feel helpless. Really? What about a charged up? Fully charged Mega Buster. Surely. Really? I can't do anything? Am I hitting the right part? Am I supposed to be hitting the red bit at the top? There's no way of getting any weapon energy back. I feel like this is where the stream is going to go to die if I can't beat this part. God damn it. Well, this first bit's easy anyway. What am I supposed to do? Nothing's doing anything. Am I just supposed to die? I'm having a look on online for this one. drills before it reaches him. Ah. I feel like I'm going to use them all up now. Is that doing anything? Oh god, the timing on that! You have to be really careful. Cool. Yes! Yes! Thank you! Oh man, I really thought I was done for then. I'd have to go and do all the bosses again. I know, I'd never have thought to do that. I mean, obviously I did at some point in the past, as I have played all these before. Drill before it reaches him. That's literally the only part in the whole game that you need to do that. So if you hadn't... If you'd used only a drill up before you got to him, then you would have been completely screwed. That was lucky. <clears throat> oh, maybe I can use this bit to farm. Right, Gion, you know what I'm about to ask you. What do I need to try and get weapon energy for? What have we got coming up? As my resident Mega Man 4 expert. Are you even going to give me any weapon energy? Pharaoh again. Why are they love using Pharaoh? Okay. Oh, damn it. Come on, really? Chat amongst yourselves while I'm waiting to get all this weapon energy. Seriously? The game's just trolling me. No, I want that, but in weapon form.
Can't fast forward on a real console. Really? That again? I don't need that. I need the weapon one. Can you attack the final boss with just a Mega Buster? Or do you need the Pharaoh? In some of, the, some of the later games, you can get power-ups, which also refill your weapon energy as well. But apparently they didn't think that was a good idea yet. Hey, finally we're picking some up. I don't need that. Oh, I almost missed it! Yes. Nearly there. Halfway there. Just enjoy the awesome music while we're grinding. A little bit of weapon NG. I'll take it. I really can't remember what this boss is. So I'm a bit scared. Oh, I always forgot what I was looking for then. Okay, one more. I need to get one more. And then we can go and try and take on the boss. That should be enough. Yes, okay, full health, let's go. Or full, full weapon energy, should I say. Okay, are we ready? Are we ready to take on Dr. Wily for the fourth time? Listen to this awesome pumping music. Oh, okay, so the screen's gonna flash. For a split second, and then you can figure out where he is. Oh my god, no. I'm going to end up wasting... I'm going to end up wasting so much. It's a cool idea, but... Damn, it really doesn't give you long to figure out. wait for him to be above. Did I see that ring is also... Ring might be effective. Okay. I'll try that if I need to. Oh, hey! <laughs> Got him by accident then. I think I'll be okay. <laughs> oh god! Oh my god! I'm scared. No, I'm not going to risk it. I think he's gone. Yes! That's it! I think. I don't think there's a second part. I remember he goes through a trapdoor. Hey, there we go. That was Mega Man 4. I didn't expect to be playing through the entire game, but I really enjoyed that. That was two hours well spent, I think. And I'm going to find out Tetris now. We can play that next. But let's enjoy this ending. Let's enjoy this ending sequence first. We did it, Twitch. Mega Man 4 complete. And 
then we can play some Nest Tetris. There we go. Hope you hope you enjoyed watching that. I love this background as well. It's so cool. Yay! Thank you, Studio Logan. How's your game dev coming on? How is progress? And thank you, Gion, for telling me what to use there at the end. That was very helpful. It's a shame the um, developers weren't allowed to use their actual names in these credits. Save the day, then ride on the outside of a train for extra coolness. Yeah, I never understood why he's on the roof of the train. He's on the roof of a train in the intro as well, and I don't really know what he's doing there either. He's just cool. He's just a badass. And then... Roll and rush, like, what the hell, Mega Man? What are you doing on the top of the train? Why didn't you just buy a ticket like everyone else? But it looks cool. I love that ending sequence. And then we get some classic Mega Man music. And then you get to see the names of the competition winners who created the Robot Masters. So for anyone that didn't know, something really cool about all of the 8-bit Mega Man games is that the Robot Masters were created by fans of the series as part of a magazine competition, I believe, at the time, in Japan. So it's really cool that they actually got their creations made into actual things that showed up in the real final games. I just thought that was really neat, and like for kids in Japan at the time, it must have been really exciting to have a design and actually get it in the final game. So cool. So yeah, the fact that they included this as part of the credits sequence is nice. Nice Mega Man 2 remix as well for the music. <coughs> There's my favourite one, Skullman. And I think that's it. Special thanks to some actual names, not just nicknames, like in the train. So that's pretty good. <clears throat> Special thanks to a lot of people. I don't know why, but I always feel like these NES Mega Man games are only made by a few people. But no, they had a big full team. Full team working on the games. Presented by Eddie. I love that as well. They didn't need to put all this effort into the ending sequence, but I appreciate it. Presented by Capcom. Where's Mega Man 12? I need more Mega Man. That's it. So now on to the next game. Let's play some Tetris. Ah, the joys of a NES. This is what I was hoping wouldn't happen when I decided to play on original hardware. I do have some contact cleaner somewhere, so I'll try that. Ah. 
Right, bear with me again one second. I'm going to try and clean it. So whoever told you that blowing on NES games was the right thing to do, no. You want to get some of this. It's called Deoxit Gold, and it's a contact cleaning solution. Put a little bit of that onto a Q-tip. Like that. And then just rub that on the inside of the cartridge, and that will clean up any gunk that's on there. And some games have done this too. There's been a lot of gunk. And just blowing on the cartridge would not get rid of that at all. So hopefully this should help it run. And I'll I'll show you just how how dirty that is. You probably won't be able to see, but No, you won't be able to see at all. Focus. No. No, you can't see. But trust me, it was gonky. Okay, don't touch. I've got it. I've got it. Yeah, there's a few other solutions as well. This is just something that I was recommended on Twitter. And it seems to do the trick. As long as the NES is actually happy to turn on. Which is not always the case. Anyway, let's just relax for a bit now and play some classic NES Tetris. Obviously, this is the version of Tetris that is used in the championships, which I think is really cool because this is the, the version of Tetris that I grew up with as a kid. And my mum was really good at Tetris and she kind of got me into it. And I always made it my goal to one day be able to beat her. And now, um, yeah, now I think I'm, I think I'm pretty good at Tetris. I can definitely hold my own. Although I haven't played it against my mum in a while, so maybe she would still beat me. Maybe I should invite her around to do a stream at some point. I'm not sure how that would go. And this NES Tetris is a lot more unforgiving than a lot of modern Tetris games that you're probably used to. It's basically, as soon as you put a block down, that's it, you have to commit to it. And I've already made a few big mistakes. Let's see if I can fix that. Yeah, it should be okay. We can get it back. I always used to be amazed when my mum was like, "Yeah, I know how to fix it." I'm like, "How do you? How do you know how to fix it?" Like, but I, I get it now. There we go. Now I've cleared up that end row, and now we can put stuff back down there again. Yeah, I'll put it down there just to be safe. <clears throat> Do any of you guys and girls watching enjoy Tetris? What's your favourite version? These days mine is Tetris Effect, but I do have a soft spot for the NES one. Even though it's missing a lot of modern Tetris 
features, which makes it kind of difficult to go back to if you're not already used to it. But I think it holds up pretty well. I enjoy it a lot more than the Game Boy one. I guess that's popular just because it was just built into every Game Boy. Uh, what's my highest level? I'm not sure. Well, maybe I'll get a new record today. I know I've got over 100. That was like one of my main goals for a long time. <clears throat> Although I do really panic playing this version of Tetris because there is no leeway whatsoever with the blocks. Like, once they've fallen to the bottom, they are just stuck. And they're not moving at all. Which does make it kind of scary. Because usually in modern Tetris, you get at least a little bit of give in case you mess up. Like, no, I don't really know where to put that one. Yeah, I've kind of messed up a bit here. Let's see whether I can fix this. That will be good. There we go. Problem solved. You basically don't want any um, gaps in the floor. So always try and fill them in. Somehow I ended up building the line for the straight on the other side, compared to normal. Ah, again, I don't really know what to do with them ones. You tend to rush and mess up. Ah, I don't want to fill that in. That should help. So, see that I've got that hole there on the right towards the bottom. I want to try and get rid of that. So, don't want to put anything on top of that one. Like, putting stuff next to it is fine. But you don't want to close that gap. You might not have a choice soon, though. Okay, I think we're safe again. Now, put that down there. Now, we've opened that gap back up. Now it's starting to get a lot faster. I'm about to close another one. Hopefully we get another straight. Yes, perfect. That'll bring it back down a bit. We can use that to fill that gap. I'm starting to panic a bit now. It's picking up. Ah, oh, no. I don't want that. The one time I don't want a straight piece. Come on, let's see whether I can get 100 at least. The fact that there's no hold as well, that's something that I really miss from modern Tetris. Like, those straight pieces, I would have been pressing L or R then to put them aside. But in some ways, I think that actually makes this Nest Tetris more fun. Because you're forced to use whatever you're being given. Oh, God. I've made so many mistakes now. Nearly on a hundred.
Oh my god, come on! I really needed two straight pieces. I did it! Now watch me completely mess up. Ah. Uh. Damn it! That's it, I'm done. Ah, oh, 105! That's pretty good. I'm happy with that, over 100. Got sweaty palms now. We got to launch the rocket. Retro. How did you rare the three D version? How did you rate the three D version? Which three D version? There's a lot of different versions of Tetris. <clears throat> Let's do it one more time. Oh, it still says I'm playing Mega Man. Whoops. Let's change that to Tetris. The PS1 version? Was there a 3D one for the PS1? I know there was Tetris Plus, but that's more of a puzzle game. There was Tetris Fear on the N64. Is that the one you're, you're talking about? That one was interesting. Right, anyway. I'll talk and play at the same time. Yeah, Tetris Fear was really cool. 3D Tetris on the Virtual Boy was good as well. But, no. Nothing can beat classic, basic Tetris, really. Well, I really like Tetris 2 as well, even though it's completely different. And maybe we can play that on a future NES stream. I do have it, but it's not one that I grew up with, so I'm not going to be showing it in this one. I was actually planning one day to do a video on all the Tetris games, but I just thought there would be way too many to cover. Even if I was just to cover the physical ones. That video would be like five hours long. And probably an insane amount of money to actually get all the different versions. So yeah, I doubt that one's going to happen. I did have plans for a video about Alexei Pagetnov as well, which I still want to do at some point. But there was a few games that were really difficult to get a hold of. And when I do those retrospective videos, I want to be able to actually show all of them in the video itself. So it might be a while until I can make that one, but it's still in, in the planning stages. I add to it occasionally whenever I get an idea or if I find out something new that he's worked on. So one day... One day you might see uh, Alexei Pajitnov, um documentary, or retrospective from me on YouTube. But it probably won't be coming for a while. Let's see, can I push a block under another one? No! Okay. Let's try again. Okay, you kind of can. Except I've really messed up now trying to do that. Oh my god, what am I going to do? I don't want that. Oh my god, this is sad. That was a cool way of clearing that. Let's see if I can fix this before the game speeds up. Oh, I don't want that anywhere. I'm still going to have that hole. 
Okay. Nearly fixed. Yay, there we go. We're fixed. That was a bit annoying. Let's try and build a tower up on the uh, on the right this time. And Tetris is such a good idea for a game. Why has no one came up with anything as simple and just immediately understandable for everyone since then? Can you think of any other games that have kind of got the same pick up and play yet, like endless, what would you call it, skill ceiling that Tetris has? I really can't think of any examples. Not that have the same amount of skill, anyway. Oh, someone's going to bed. Studio Lo loading's off to bed. Good company on Twitch. Yeah, thank you for coming by. I do appreciate that. Have a good sleep. It's almost ten here, so you're an hour ahead. Yeah, thanks so much. Hopefully I'll see you next time. I'm glad I've been good background company for you. Pretty chilled out stream tonight. I didn't expect to be playing all the way through Mega Man 4. That was just kind of a, an accident that I just went with. But I'm happy I did. I'm always happy to play through that game. Or any of the NES Mega Man games. They're like comfort gaming to me, I suppose. Are there any games that you guys use as comfort games? Like ones that you can just zone out to from your childhood or games that you grew up with that you can always just be guaranteed to enjoy every time you turn it on? Like Mega Man for me. Or like Tetris as well. What should we play after this? I've got a big stack of games up on the side, and I've only played two of them. I think I'll stream for maybe another hour. So I'll I'll pick something after this. If my child self could see me now being this good at Tetris, I wouldn't believe my eyes. I used to be so bad at it, now I can just like play it without thinking most of the time. these pieces they're giving me. Oh, I'm glad you can kind of shift pieces underneath. Let's try it with this one. There we go. All fixed. Nothing to worry about. going to be 105. I think that was how much how many I got last time. Oh, it's the wrong way around. Damn it. That's what I wanted. 
There we go. I love the colours and the the way the bricks look all shiny in this version. They kind of look like sweets, like candy. I really like it. Kind of the way they've got a nice little shine on the end. And the way it controls is just perfect as well. I've got the Famicom version too, and they really messed up the controls on the Famicom one. You have to press up to rotate the blocks, and you press A to um, move them down, but it only has snap movement. So the only way you can move them is instantly right to the bottom of the screen, and I keep accidentally turning them instead, so... I'm glad that Nintendo made a better version than BPS, I think, made that one. Wow, okay, I'm doing way better than last time. I've jinxed it now, haven't I? Where's my straight piece? I need one soon. There it is, thank god. I was starting to panic a bit then. Wow. 121. This might be a new record. Ah, I didn't have anywhere to put that one. The problem with the NES game is, though, as soon as you've messed up once, everything comes crashing down because you can't really move the pieces fast enough to reposition them. Like, I know I've made a load of mistakes now. But, let's see whether I can claw it back. No. No. Oh my god. Impossible. 130. I'm pretty happy with that. 130 is good. Uh, Gion says at the moment Pokemon Puzzle Challenge and Pokemon Picross on the analog pocket. And Mario Picross, sorry. Yeah, they're two. They're two fantastic games. I love both of them. Dun, 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 dun. Right, let's see what what shall we play next? What about a Nintendo classic? Can you see that? Let's play some Excite Bike. And I'll try cleaning this one first just in case. So what is everyone up to tonight, apart from watching me play old NES games? Wow, okay, that's very dirty. Right. There we go, it only took three attempts. Da -dun 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 -da -dun. There's a weird thing with this game, the fact that the save feature actually doesn't work at all, but they still kept it in. It only works on the um, Famicom disk system. And the interesting thing about this game, yeah, there you go. Watching this instead of Married at First Sight. 
Oh dear, that doesn't sound very fun. I don't know what that is. I'm guessing some sort of reality TV. Well, I'm glad I'm here to entertain you so that you don't have to watch that anyway. So I'm sure a lot of you know about Excite Bike already, but basically you have to try and balance using the turbo with the regular boost. And if you use turbo when you're going over the arrows on the floor, then it resets. So sometimes it's worth holding the turbo down. And there are races later on as well. This is like a, a time trial thing. And when you're in the air, you can sort of lean left and right as well to sort of angle yourself to land better. It's a new record. It's the only record. Dun, 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 dun. I used to love the fact that you could make your own levels on this as well. I'll show you that in a minute. Even though you can't save them. Oh no, I fell off. If you mash the buttons, you can get back on the bike faster. Oh no, I thought I'd landed that okay. So you have to kind of worry about the distance of things as well and whether it's better to do a normal jump like that or whether it's better to use a turbo jump. So there's a lot of hidden depth to this. It may look like super simple, but... There's enough depth to keep it entertaining. Oh wow, I did that badly. Oh, come on! On the finish line! Oh man, I overheated on the finish line. Woohoo, first place again. Because I have no competition. Ooh, now we got a dark blue arena instead. Ah, I always used to like using these big blocks, but they're really annoying if you fall off the top. You have a long way to go before you can get back on the bike. Oh no, again? No. Man, my skills on Excite Bike have really gone downhill. Pun not intended. Let's see on lap two if I can do that better. There's another new block type. No, overheat. Damn it. And I'm on the mud. Oh no, I've really messed this one up. Alright, let's see if I can beat 44 seconds. I'm sure I can. I'd have to do something horribly wrong not to be able to beat that. Okay, we did that a lot better this time. Still overheated though. Okay. Right next to one of the speed boost things as well. That's better. Yeah, loads better. I'm guessing 33 seconds this time. Let's see, we know you there. Oh, I didn't say overall. Hey, looks like I beat the estimated time anyway. Yay, another record! This is too easy. I definitely didn't used to find it this easy. Off to bed, Gion. 
Thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed it, even though it wasn't Pokemon. Don't worry. Pokemon will be coming back. At some point. So, the interesting thing with these obstacles is that you need to do wheelies to get over them. Ah, oh, and yeah, if you land with your back wheel up on there, then you'll end up falling over. Oh, thank you. I still can't quite believe I've got 20,000 subscribers. That's insane. Maybe one day I'll have 20,000 followers on Twitch. I think I'll have to try a bit harder than this, though, if I want to get anywhere on Twitch. But I appreciate everyone who's here already. I really do. But Twitch is just, like, a fun place for me to just relax. I don't want to put too much effort into it if that makes sense. So hopefully you guys are finding this kind of relaxing. That's why I'm aiming with these streams. Nothing serious. I just want to show you some fun games, really. Ah! Oh, overheat right before the speed thing. No, really? I don't know how many levels there are, actually. I've never really played it, like, that long to find out what's at the end of these. I just know that these ones are like time trials and the other ones are like proper races with computer opponents. There's a finish. Did I get number one again? Because I have no opponents. Number nine? What the hell? How did I go from number one to number nine? <clears throat> That's... Oh, okay, we got a different one this time. Yeah, the, over, the overheat is the boost, so this is normal accelerate when you're just going really slowly. But if you hold down B, that's when you can go faster. And you need to do that to get over the jumps. So you need to hold down B most of the time, and then you have to let go just before the temperature fills up. But if you go over the arrows, then it goes back down again. So I know how to play it, I'm just really bad. See? I held it down too long. But if I didn't hold it down, I wouldn't have gone far enough. Like there, if you hold it down, you get a lot further on those jumps. And here as well, you can probably hold it down to get over them better. And now I'm not holding it, because I want to wait for it to go back down again. And now I'm holding it down. You can tell because the sound effect changes. Ah, oh, really? I thought I'd done that, okay. <coughs> Oh no, I missed the arrow. And going over those arrows resets the temperature as well. So now I'm not holding it. Now I am a little bit to try and get over that gap. And I'll hold it there to get a bit more distance. No, held it too long. It's really difficult to time how long you can actually hold it down for, because obviously you're worried about doing the angle for the jumps and then you end up overheating. It is really challenging. 125. That's not good. Ninth again. Right, let's reset it. And we can try one of the actual races, which is this Selection B one. Now you get to race against some computer opponents. When it resets, hopefully it comes back on the capture card. Yeah, there we go. And you can actually, ah, if you time it right, you can get them to fall off their bikes as well. If you go into their lanes. Oh my god, why am I doing so badly? If I just accelerate though, I'll go really slow like this the whole race. So you have to boost in order to get anywhere. That's it. Make them fall over. I love doing that. But obviously if they go in your lane... 
And then the same is going to happen to you. Ah, oh, it landed on his head. Right, now I need to stop boosting. Ah, we both crashed. He sent me flying. <laughs> oh my god. I don't remember this game being so frustrating. Was a good run. Now we're gonna stop so I don't overheat. Nearly run that guy over. There's a the finish. How are we doing? Hey, I came first, apparently, even though there was loads of guys ahead of me. I don't really understand how that works. Let's do the next race. I'll do a few more. Then we can play something else. I've got a few other games that I want to try and get through tonight. There's one I've got there that unfortunately I couldn't find the box for. I know I've got it somewhere though. It might be in the loft. That is Marble Madness. So maybe we can play that next. Or Mario 1, I think. We should probably play Mario 1 because it actually says that on the box itself. And there's something pretty interesting about this version of Mario 1 as well. It actually runs faster than the American version. So, let's do a few more races. Then we can play some classic Super Mario. As if there's not already a million other people on Twitch already playing Mario. Ah, oh, I left it too long. Oh, I think Twitch still says I'm playing Tetris as well. I should have changed that. Hold on. I'll just quickly change that to say Excite Bike. Whoops, okay, there we go. Now we're officially playing at Sight Bike. What is the rarest NES game I own? Um, I don't really think I own any rare NES games. Um, trying to have a look now. Not really. I think they're all pretty common. I don't really know what a rare NES game is that much. It's not really a system I've looked into collecting. It's just one that I've sort of accumulated stuff for over time. Um, Little Nemo, maybe? Is that rare? The Dream Master? Or Monster in My Pocket? That might be a rare one. Um, Adventures of Lolo 2, maybe? Not really sure. I've got some rare Famicom games. Oh my god, I'm not getting these jumps right on this one. That's all. Oh my god. Yeah, I've got a few rare Famicom games from when I went to Japan. I've got um, Castlevania 3 and um, not Gimmick. What's the other one? The really cute and colourful platformer where you get to turn into loads of different characters. I can't remember what it's called. Hebereke? Something like that? That might be it, actually. So, yeah, in terms of rare games, I've got a lot more rare stuff for the Japanese version of the NES compared to the UK one. I don't really know what's rare in the UK. What? Anyone who's watching, what are some rare NES games for the, in the UK that I can play on a PAL system? I'll try and track some down. It's not really a system I've looked into for collecting that much. I don't really know why. 
But I'd be interested in getting some more interesting collectible games for it. If anyone knows of any. I'll have a quick Google and see what some rare NES games are. I remember Flintstones as one. Um, let's see. NES, prices and values. Price charting. Zelda? I don't know about that. Mr. Gimmick? Yeah, that's a rare one. Some companies picked up the license for that, so it's coming out on the Switch soon, which is pretty cool. They're re-releasing some old Sunsoft games. Ah, oh, I missed the arrow thing. RC Pro-Am 2. I didn't know there was a sequel. That's a fun game, RC Pro-Am. And a bit of trivia, that is what Diddy Kong Racing was going to be. Pro-Am 64. Mega Man 5? I've got Mega Man 5, I didn't think that was rare. I know Mega Man 6 is, I don't own a physical copy of Mega Man 6, unfortunately. Ah, didn't do a wheelie properly then. No, I thought I could trip him up. Snowboard Challenge, apparently, is a rare game. Oh, I don't know how to land on them. There's a finish. I don't think I did very well that time. Oh yeah, Little Samson. Did that come out in the UK, though? Oh my god. I see the first or ninth. What's going on? Um, Little Samson is available on Etsy in the UK. I don't think that's the official one. Um... Oh yeah, I'll quickly show you the I'll quickly show you the design mode as well, which I used to really love. Oh. <clears throat> I think I've done it wrong. It's weird that there's no menu. You actually have to press the reset button on the console. So yeah, if you go on design, then you get to choose all the different blocks and you can actually build the levels yourself which is really cool so I used to have loads of fun um, doing this as a kid just coming up with my own track layouts and stuff let's see if I can come up with something slightly playable here. Yeah, let's put some speed stripes down. And... Oh no, I don't like them big ones. Maybe that'll be cool. Try and jump over those two bushes there. And... That'd be cruel, making you go into them. Let's try one of them, either way. And then, let's put the pit there. So, if you were really good at coming across there, then... Uh, no, not that one. Let's put in an actual gap like that. Yeah. Let's 
And then if you did stay up the top, then you can get some more speed stripes and you get to avoid these things. And then you have to swap. And there's going to be three of them. And then because we haven't had any, let's put in a few of these for fun. And then let's end it with one of those big horrible ones. And then let's put the end in right there. And let's make it two laps. Did that work? Ah, oh, it didn't work. Oh, okay, it did. It was just a bit further away. No, I missed it. My own course, and I forgot how it played. And of course, the annoying big one tripped me up. Yeah, I don't know why there's such a big gap at the start. Yeah, that's better. I think I missed the uh, arrow there. Woohoo, much better. Let's see if I can beat 35 seconds. Ranking number one. Because I'm the only person who's ever raced on it. Let's see if I can beat 35. This was one of the first games that I played that actually let you make your own stuff. And I honestly loved this as a kid. I spent so many hours trying to create my own tracks and things and I honestly think that's one of the reasons, this game is one of the reasons why I wanted to become a game designer. Which I've kind of given up on these days, I don't really make games anymore, but it was a big passion of mine for a long time and I do think part of that at least came from playing Excite Bike as a kid. Yeah, nice. 37 though, still not great. We can do better than that. And I think this is why I enjoy games like Trackmania so much as well. Like My love of creating levels for racing games came from this. I'll go up to the top. I think I've made a pretty cool level here, actually. And then go down... And ah, oh, almost. Damn it! I hate them big ones. They always catch me out. Oh no! Okay, I'm not going to beat my own record. But yeah, you can you can get an idea from this how much fun I used to have as kids. As kids? As a kid? I was only one kid. Oh, I was not multiple children. 43 seconds, that's bad. Let's try one more and then we can play some Mario. Okay, last try. At least I'm watching my temperature gauge a bit more closely now. Yeah, much better. Oh no, overheating! No! Ah, oh, any chance I had of beating my record then is gone. One, two, three, one, two, three, and do a wheelie. 37 again. Right. Okay, that's enough Excite Bike. I'm not going to beat 35. Oh, yeah, let me show you what happens if you try and save. If I remember right, it just stays on this screen and it doesn't actually do anything at all. Because they forgot to actually program in a proper save function to the cartridge. So. 
it just stops. That's it, it just doesn't do anything. Whoa, it booted up first time. It's a miracle. And let me just change it on Twitch so it knows what I'm playing. And if any of you guys are used to modern versions of Super Mario 1, let me know if you think there's something off about this as soon as we start playing. This is easily my favourite way of playing Mario 1. And you've probably noticed why. It's a lot faster. Um, because when Nintendo came to try and fix the issues that playing the game in 50Hz had, they actually ended up making the game run faster than it was supposed to. And in turn, this is actually the most fun version of Mario 1 that there is. So the music's faster, the game just feels faster and more responsive on the PAL NES compared to an American or Japanese one. But apparently I found out recently that there was a second version of Mario 1 that was released in the UK which actually fixed the extra speed that this version has. Um, so I want to try and track that down. It was one with like a blue, a blue cover. And it's really interesting to see that there's actually two completely different versions of the same game on one system. I don't know what the Mario and Duck Hunt version's like. I don't know whether that also has the same thing or not. Right, I've played this game too much. Years and years ago I did do a Let's Play, a Warpless version of Mario 1 which was kind of fun. Oh yeah, th this is a fun level if you can do this right. If you time everything right, you can get through this level without stopping. So if you jump at exactly the right pixel, then you can do that and jump over all the piranha plants. Oh man, it feels so good to be playing this on the CRT. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, playing this on the CRT, there's just no lag whatsoever, it's just amazing. Unfortunately, Mario 2 and 3 don't have the same sped up kind of gameplay that this one does. Yeah, you can tell I've played this game just a few times. Just a few times. It was my parents that found out all these secrets and taught them to me. We can go all the way to World 8. And now watch me lose all my lives. Because I always struggle with these levels. I love that as well, the fact that you can just run over all the gaps there. Oh no, I've lost my fire flower. That's it. Run over. You basically need a fire flower in the uh, in the later World Eight levels. Let's see. Is there anything in here? Star will help. It's weird it doesn't give you any one-ups in this one. Whoa, that was close. Oh my god, this just controls absolutely perfectly. I love it. There, re there really is no better 2D platformer, even to this day. The physics are just spot on. They really are. 
I feel like game developers should still study Mario 1 to find out what makes a game feel good. Just like the amount of momentum he has, the amount of height that you get on the jump, you know, depending on whether you hold it down or not. The con the amount of control that you've got in the air, just everything is just perfect. It really is. Literally, I can't fault it at all. I should probably wait for that bullet bill to go past. It's the level after this is the one that I'm worried about because you've got the um, the Hammer Bros, Hammer Bros, whatever you want to call them. Hey, we got fireworks! Right, let's see whether I can get through this one. And then eight four, I have no idea. Uh, I know there is a secret one up somewhere. Ah, uh, damn it. I could have just ran past him then. Yeah, this is where the run goes to die. Oh, okay. That works. Bah. <laughs> the problem with using all the warps is I get here without any extra lives at all. I think I've only ever managed to do it like once or twice, you know, getting all the way through with using the warps. Oh no, so close. I really thought I'd managed to run underneath him then. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay. One more game, then I'll call it a night. I think everyone's gone now, anyway. So, what shall I play last? What have I got here? Yeah, let's end it with some Marble Madness. That was another one I really enjoyed as a kid. Man, I haven't played this in a long time. I remember getting really frustrated at some of the later stages in this one. That's just an instinct. Whoa, again. First time. Oh yeah, Rare made this version. That's pretty cool. Let's see, well, retrofit. Yeah. There's two different control options as well. The 45 degree one is weird. It's kind of like um, how you would control an old style isometric game. But 90 makes more sense because it's like down is just down. And yeah, for anyone who hasn't played Marble Madness before, it's a really simple game with a really, really strict time limit. So. All you really need to do is just roll the marble to the end of the stage, but you only get a very short amount of time to be able to do that, and the later levels are stupidly difficult. But it's a really fun game. It's one of those games that, you know, the more you practice, the more fun it becomes, and the better you get at it. Obviously, it also came out on loads of other systems, but this is the way I played it back in the day. And a really interesting piece of trivia about Marvel Madness. It was designed and developed um, for Atari by Mark Cerny. And Mark Cerny has had a really interesting career. So after Atari, he went to work for Sega and helped them make Sonic 2. And then after that, he uh, went to work for Sony. And he was the lead system architect on the PS4 and 5, which is pretty crazy. 
So, I don't know why I'm struggling to get through this. I've never struggled on this bit before. This is weird. Alright. Let's try going around that side instead. I think you must lose control on that section then. I guess it's ice. It's meant to be ice. Wow, I really messed up now. That means I'm not going to have much time to get through this one. I always just use the sides to help bounce me through that section. This game is great in the arcades as well, by the way, if you've got the trackball and controller. It's so much more fun to play than using a D-pad. Alright, I'll try going this way, although I always really struggle. But... Hey, I'm doing alright today, actually. There we go. Not too bad. Now, this next one, you've got a big slope at the start. There we go. I like the I like the um, design of this level. Whee! And you got these stupid vacuum cleaner things. And then you got the spikes on the floor. All these stages are really memorable. Like I love the designs of them. The catapult. Whee! But yeah, this this bit I hate because you can't predict where they're going to come from and they can really mess you up like that this is where I lose most of my time and again, except you have to use that one I've never really understood how to do this bit Nearly. I guess you just got to wait and time it properly so that you can use it as a... as like a catapult thing. I don't know. Anyone? How are you supposed to get past this bit? Maybe you're supposed to go this way. Yeah, maybe that's easier. I've only got one second left. Alright, let's try again. Seventh. Let's try that again. It's got a fun two-player mode as well. Let's see if I can do the bit at the end with the ice on the second level better this time. I don't understand that. Why does it sometimes stop you in that, um, what do you call it, a wand comes out the top? I've never understood that. Is it telling me to stop going so fast or something? Oh, easy. Just go across the top. I've got loads more time this time. Let's 
78 seconds. That's way more than I need. I spoke too soon. There's probably a much better way of getting through this section. I think I know what to do on the next bit now as well, to get past the... Ah, the acid got me. No! That's not fair, I respawned right on top of it. Shall I try going up this time? Oh yes! I've never got through there in one go before. Wow. Wow, my Marble Madness skills are on point today. That was cool. I've never got through that bit in one go before. Ever. Okay, I think I've got a good plan for this stage now. I know you can take a different route as well, you can go right there, but I want to try try doing it this way. Oh no. That's it, you have to go up slightly. 50 seconds, I'm doing way better than I was doing last time. Some tricky manoeuvring to do. Easy, there's a finish right there. Just gotta watch out for them hammer things. And we've done it! Excellent, with 35 seconds left. <clears throat> now, I've only ever been to this next level like two or three times. You've gotta finish the silly race where everything's upside down. Why is it silly? We're about to find out. Wasted a lot of time there. What am I being told off for? Come on, I can do it. I don't think I've ever got this far before. Why are there so many annoying birds everywhere? Is that the finish? Am I going the wrong way? No, come on! The perspective is a bit weird. Yes! I did it with 10 seconds left. 11 seconds left. Wow, I really messed up some of that as well. I could have done that a lot better. So I've got 31 seconds to finish the ultimate race. I don't even know what I'm doing on this one. What? What am I supposed to do on this one? I'm supposed to be getting onto that, aren't I? Can't get any more of a run up than that. Ah, oh, time up. Okay, I don't understand what I was meant to do on that one. Fifth place. Anyway, I think that'll do it for tonight. I'm quite tired now, but I got through a bunch of great games, and I really hope you you guys enjoyed watching as well. It was great to be able to actually use my proper console and all the games and stuff. And I am planning on doing a NES video very soon, so I hope you're all looking forward to that. Anyway, take care, and I'll be doing another stream soon.
I'm going to stop it for a minute here. Goodbye.